All right, so today we are going to jump straight into the heart of things with what I think is the most important section on the entire MCAT, CARS, the Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills. If you are new to this channel, my name is Rachel, and I am here to share with you for free um, what I did to study and how to prepare for the MCAT to score in the 99th percentile, as well as how I got a 4.0 in my undergraduate career and am now attending the medical school of my dreams to our content. So... Critical analysis and reasoning skills, CARS, is probably the section of the MCAT that almost everybody ignores. Um, they all just kind of think that they need to study for the chemistry, the OCHEM, the physics, and they get all caught up in their head. Now, studying for the chem -phys section and for the biochem, biology sections are pretty similar. Psychology is a little bit different. Um, but CARS is often overlooked because people think, oh, I took the ACT, I took the SAT, I know how to read, I've been under in undergrad. It's very different and it's very specific. Um, it's kind of its own beast. So when you're looking at CARS, I just want you to totally take it separate from all the rest of the MCAT because you are going to go into chem phys, knowing equations, knowing concepts, same thing with like social definitions, different keys, terms. Um, with CARS, you don't know anything except for what is in the passages. If you are a biochemistry major and you get a biochemistry passage, I don't care. If the author doesn't say it, you don't know it. Um, it's not something that you're going to factor into your decisions, is what I should say. Um, everything in CARS is based off of what the passages say. They want to make sure that you can read a passage, understand what the author is actually trying to portray, understand any bias behind it, understand the use of literary devices, not so much like, oh, this is a metaphor, but what they mean, what they're saying, what the actual meaning of... Um, the passages and not just might what it seem how the arguments relate to each other it's a it's much more complex think about it basically if it helps you when you're approaching it is that you are a doctor in the future reading a research article and you want to be able to see if the author was biased when they were writing it you want to be able to see if there was an ulterior motive behind the writing um, maybe if the arguments aren't as strong or if one is much stronger than the other um, especially if that wasn't portrayed in the passage. Um, you're looking for a lot of different sources of bias. It's just critical reasoning to the max. So that's all great, but how do you actually prepare for CARS? Uh, the biggest thing is whenever you are reading CARS, don't just skim through it for speed. So basically, if you don't know the CARS section, you have 90 minutes to take and it's nine passages, 10 minutes a passage. Keep it easy. Don't do any crazy math, 10 minutes per passage. Personally, what I did is I would just kind of skim a passage and see if it just seemed really hard, a ton of words that I don't know, a ton of really complicated structures, um, and I would just skip it. And literally, I wouldn't go read through. There's some people who kind of jump through the whole thing. They'll read like a very brief part of every single passage and then like rank them or something. That just took too much time for me. It was too much thinking. So I would just try not to skip. And then if I had one or two passages that seemed really hard, I would just make the decision right then skip it, go to the next passage, and then when you get to the end of the section, when you're looking back over your questions, you'll have a gap of like six or seven questions that you didn't answer, so you automatically know that that is a passage that you didn't get to, and you can go back to it really quickly. It'll take you like maybe 10, 20 seconds out of your whole test time. It's a much more efficient manner of kind of dedicating your time. Um, I suggest this approach a lot because the really hard passages can be time sinks. Um, they can just kind of be a bomb and the test is designed that way. They want to make sure that you can prioritize, that you can time manage throughout the test. Um, so if you get to a really hard passage and you keep on trying to spend all your time on these few questions and get them right and then you get to the end, you don't even answer the really easy passage at the end. I would very, very highly suggest that if you're going to guess on a passage, guess on the hard passage that you're probably going to get it wrong even if you could spend 30 minutes looking at it. And then save your time for the easy passages where you can actually take advantage of the questions that are a little bit more um, within your reach, maybe, during the test. So also, while you are reading the passage, how do you approach it? Ask yourself questions as you're reading the passage. It keeps you engaged. You're going to have nine passages to read. It's an hour and a half of reading. You're going to be tired. You're going to be zoning out. It helps you keep engaged, and you also will start to learn to kind of guess what the MCAT's gonna ask you before they even do it. So, what questions do you ask yourself? 
mainly try to stick to why and how questions. If you're asking why and how about the passage, you're generally on the right track. Um, for example, why did the author include this example? Um, why is this paragraph in the location that it is? Why is it at the end? Why is it at the beginning? Um, why does the author make a transition from supporting something to rejecting something so quickly? How do these two paragraphs relate to each other? How do the arguments relate to each other? Um, how does this source view the argument that the author's making? Because if you can understand that, then you know so many things. You know the argument that the author's making. You know what the source believes. You know how it relates to it. So then if you get to a question later, like, come to find out that some data was changed, how would the source react to it? Or how would the author react to it? Which the MCAT loves to do. You've already been thinking about the factors enough to kind of guess ahead on what they're going to ask you. So you have to sit there and have a brand new idea that you've never thought of before. I also highly encourage you while you're practicing your CARS passages before you take the test during your practice test to practice these questions and kind of have a list of questions, maybe like five or six questions that are your go-tos. So you're not trying to sit there and think of new questions on the spot while you're reading. Um, during test day, we're trying to make it as streamlined, efficient, and practiced as possible. So if you have five or six go-to really good questions that you think kind of lead you towards what answers and what questions are normally given on the practice test, then you are in a really good spot. Um, this is kind of an overview crash course of cars. I'll get into some more specific details in the videos to come, but I hope this is helpful for you. And if you have any questions or if you have any specific requests, please, um, there's an email in my account and there's also the comment section. So I'm happy to hear it.